to be quite honest, sometimes omens are something to be really looked at and believed in. Um, you know, one thing I've always looked at prior to the World Trade Center bombing or <laughs> bombing or plane crashed, planes crashing into the World Trade Center, 911, a uh, 2001. Also, there was a 1993 World Trade Center bombing. And if you look at Ted Gunderson, who was uh, the former head of the FBI in the Los Angeles district, um, not only from him, but there's other people have tales that it was an inside job also. I looked, uh, you know, what I always said, you know, it's kind of a sick joke, but I said that um, the Freedom Tower, after it's built in place of the World Trade Centers, is going to be an aiming point for the Chinese. So I said it's going to be. And I, I really do think that the next time there's going to be destruction in New York, it's going to be on a much grander scale than um, the World Trade Centers. And I think it is planned. Uh, one thing I could tell you that um, a lot of the stuff that's going on is has been pre-planned and also about our economic... Well, let's talk about the debt, for instance, okay? You think the debt is is not just something that is deliberately contrived. It's a matter of stupidity that people are using Keynesian economics and they don't know what's going on. They're a bunch of academic eggheads. Maybe not everybody knows exactly what's going on, but they do know that it's leading to an economic implosion. Uh, one of the ones I looked at recently in the major media was Stanley Druckenmiller, who's one of the um, world um, leading, he's a hedge fund manager, he says the world's leading into an economic implosion due to all the debt. It's going to have to happen. He's not the only one that's saying it. You're, you look at predictions by Grantham Management. I, you know, I don't even look at the fear mongers like that are specializing in silver and bullion and Bitcoin. I don't even look at what they're saying. Um, they're constantly pushing fear. And I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a couple solutions here. Be a little bit beyond uh, silver, but something about spirituality in a way. But uh, the fear is, it's like, you know, what old girl is looking at this guy. It's an addiction, you know. That's all it is. Fear is an addiction. That's really why there's so many people are looking at Alex Jones and his clickbait freaking stuff he puts out there. I have to combat a lot of this stuff. It's like I have to combat both the major media and a lot of the alternative media. But when I'm looking at what's heading, where the United States is heading, we're going to a purification. I think the, the American Indians, when they talked about there's going to be a time when there's going to be a purification, there's going to be a great purification, and Americans are all going to go back to the ways of the American Indian. I think that's true. You know, I'm not against at all. I'm not against managing the Earth's resources and taking only from the Earth what is needed for our survival and our good health. I'm all for clean air and all for clean water. But I also realize that the Environmental Protection Agency is nothing but a control mechanism. That's all it is. It's a communist control mechanism that is there to control our lives. Silver, I think, for one real reason, is going to take off and be very, very important. Not so much where it's going to be so much as an investment or how many dollars you're going to get for it. But I think the real demand for silver is going to take off is when people realize it is one of the simplest ways to purify water, to use as medicine to sterilize bandages, use topically for wounds. It does help somewhat internally in the body because of like nano silver, colloidal silver, pretty damn easy to make. Could you imagine if Everybody in the United States, every family owned a few ounces of silver. There'd be hundreds of millions of ounces of silver taken off the market right there. Not alone what you would be thinking about if it's in Europe, China, Africa, South America, Russia, Japan, and across the world. There, there isn't even enough silver to go around for medicinal purposes. And one of the things I think we're really going to be worried about the most in the future is how do we really survive in the real world when the electronic world crumbles? 
One of the reasons I think the electronic world may crumble is due to, well, it could be an EMP attack. It could be an EMP by nature. Um, I'm not pushing fear. I'm talking reality. For one, you do know that our government, it's, well, it's not that it seems. It, it is. It's deliberately not hardening our infrastructure and our electric grid. They're deliberately not doing this. I have to make that bold statement. What happens if our grid goes down due to an EMP attack or even a cyber attack, which seems to be pretty damn easy to do today? It's amazing it hasn't happened yet. I think there's a timetable for when this is going to happen, and there's a lot of hints out there that it's going to happen. One of the things I've been noticing, too, when um, the major media, I won't even mention any names, but they're talking about... Um, Donald Trump's economic plan will be a disaster, and it's like they're thinking about, I can already tell you what they're doing, that they're thinking about using Donald Trump as an excuse why the economic um, system is going to collapse. You know, when he's talking make America great, well, he's they're going to pull the plug on every damn thing. That's what I think is going to happen. But in, in that same you know, light, when that happens, I think the whole thing is going to go full circle because it's almost like dominoes when you're pushing the dominoes and they think, you know, the people that are in control, they, they seem to outsmart themselves. There's unintended consequences for their actions. They see how many steps forward it can have, what, can, what, can, what the results are going to be, but the end result is they're going to be destroyed too. I think what we're going to happen in this country is we're going back to the ways of the American Indians again, the true American Indians. And, you know, actually, if it was my way, um, you know, a lot of these federally uh, off-limits lands out that are controlled by the BLM and the Bureau, you know, Bureau of Land Management or, um, uh, you know, the EPA or whatever, I, I personally would just give them back to the Indians because we as Americans can't use them. We might as well give them back to the American Indians again. Um, but in the meantime, everything on the major media and also our electronic airwaves is a total distraction. Um, and you can see this even on YouTube. I mean, some of the biggest things I'm thinking YouTube, uh, some of the biggest topics out there are just video games, entertainment completely, short little snippets of and, you know, I don't really put those type of things out. Sometimes I'd like to put things out a little bit more fun way to get some of the financial information out. But um, I really don't. I really avoid those topics. Um, some of the topics I put out probably are not, um, you know, advertiser lucrative maybe as much because, if you know, what I'm putting out is too politically incorrect. But so be it. You know, I'm a fighter and I will continue to do as many videos as possible and keep going forward with far more production than other people, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, I'm telling people this for a reason that I am not, I have been a Sioux, okay? I've always kept one foot in a, the working class type thing, but I have been a Sioux uh, for most of my life, uh, working in offices as my actual trade is in accounting. But... I also have to state that, you know, I also know many other areas, and I realize that all the electronic system that we have today and all the entertainment and everything that's predicated upon um, all our essentials are just easily to get, easy to get for uh, at the local store, uh, just in time demand and all that type of stuff. I think all that is going to collapse. And what's going to happen is we're going to go back to a much earlier time in America, maybe before the time of where the Amish were, but like into the time of the American Indian. You look at most of the major media out there, it's all a distraction. You see the pretty blondes with the short skirts and, you know, sh showing off the little, oh, hi, you know, all this kind of bullshit. It's, and, you know, you got your conservatives going looking at this and like, oh, yeah, you know. yeah, it's like, it's garbage. They don't tell you anything. They're not even telling you about basic survival or what needs to be done um, in a real situation. I have to say that politicians, it, there's really two types of people out there. There's the type of people that they, they're the people that want to 
control other people and this is also in the same group and there's also types of people that want to be controlled and not have to think so here you're looking at you know the two blondes that are working for the controllers and they're part of the controlling mechanism and then you got the audience that wants to be controlled that's one group of people the other group of people are free thinkers they want to take action they want to be responsible they don't want to be controlled they will rather live in a little more danger and want to be 100 percent free rather than listening to stuff like you know coming out of the major media all the time I think that when we have a great economic purification um, not only is the economic system going to collapse but also the food distribution system is going to collapse the transportation system is going to collapse because everything's can predicated upon our power grid for one and that is actually fragile I've been looking over the decades how much work they've actually done to harden the power grid system none it's actually far more fragile than it's always it ever been because now it's controlled by computers which can be hacked into fairly easily um, we were probably far more secure in our power grid system back in the early 70s or even the early 80s than we are now yes things are more efficient but it's all based upon electronic software that keeps it running efficiently and if there is an EMP which can be from nature which I talked about a mini ice age is coming it's just a natural cycle but the last time we had a real mini ice age and the one that's coming up in the future is going to be far more severe it's not a conspiracy fear monger thing it's a reality thing uh, the last time we had a mini ice age which was going to be small with the one we're coming up in is going to be more like the 1600s the one we had in the 1800s is less severe we had the Carrington event of 1859 if that happened today it would destroy and fry our total infrastructure grid and our computer systems not only with finance but all those computers that control just-in-time delivery and all the transportation uh, mechanisms that we have <clears throat> so we're you know I don't think this is out of the realm of possibility don't hold your breath that it's gonna happen next week or next year but it should happen sometime between now and 2035 which you know you'll think you'll say to me well why is that because the middle of the mini of ice age should be around 2035 to 2030 2050 so sometime before that time we will see a solar flare that will cause an EMP event provided we don't get something from a foreign power that does it to us in a, mili in a military strike and we will go back to an earlier time there's no doubt about it um, I think a lot of the prophecies of the American Indians are absolutely correct some people ignore these things because they think well maybe they're just smoking a little too much uh, funny stuff in their peace pipe and they're imagining these type of things but if you look back at so much that's happened in history empires have come and gone you know when, when the hell was it even when New York City was first um, discovered it was um, not 1492 I think it was 15 something by a Frenchman uh, I forgot exactly what it was but it's the if it year 15 something so you're looking at less than 500 years before even some white man even set foot into New York City and look where it is today you know it's hard to imagine that something that could be unraveled that but if you also look at it hasn't been around that long either and if you look at the number of popu the amount of population we have on this earth today everything is predicated upon machinery farming with um, special methods and also large corporations so you know I also have to state that silver for medicinal purposes is probably one of the main reasons you need to invest in silver one of the reasons oh you know what 
three nine silver and four nine silver will work will work fine with colloidal silver. Actually, three nine silver. I did put a video out on that, and I showed you mathematically why three nine silver will work, because really the water uh, purification using distilled water is far more important of of the of the net effect of the colloidal or nano silver. But there may be a great demand for silver because of health reasons when people really understand and there's no medicines involved around and people are succumbing to diseases. Um, I think that one of the biggest problems that we're going to have in the future is food and also medical. Um, what happens when there's a lack of food? What happens when there's the uh, you know the earth changes and we say for instance um, you know the environment is not safe you know this water is not safe to drink or the air is not as safe to, to breathe due to say you know problems of contamination uh, for radiation for instance what would happen so many more people would get sick medicine is actually going to be your number one thing that you need to keep in mind and silver is a major part of that medicine don't let them fool you about it. I know there's exaggerations about silver curing this and curing that. Um, I got hammered like crazy on videos that I put out that um, nano and colloidal silver is not a cure for Ebola. It's not. It may help a little bit. Um, but that does not mean that there isn't a lot of uh, medicinal value behind having silver. Uh, but there is not anywhere near enough silver in this world for even one ounce to be provided to one each family in this world which means the price can go up exponentially and you know eventually that even that ounce will be consumed if, you know after you make you know hundreds of gallons of colloidal silver you can use it for so much to purify to stay healthy uh, to keep away mic micro right microbial agents and infections and things like that that it, it's going to matter. It's going to be a matter of the price, even from that standpoint. Even with only everybody just had to have one ounce, would go up exponentially because there's not enough to go around. That's one of the problems. Like people look at it strictly as an investment, but it's not. It's it's actually an investment in your health. And the fact that you say you hoard more silver or you have all these other ounces of silver and other people need it and they find out they need it for medicinal purposes that price can be that, that much higher wouldn't no matter what the spot market is I'm going to state it again though that we are coming up to a time of purification this debt cycle whereby the United States has way over 12 19 trillion dollars of debt and I don't know 16 trillion dollars I mean 60 trillion dollars of unfunded liabilities besides that uh, and on top of Europe being in debt on top of Japan being in debt no time in this world has this ever happened and I know it's on purpose they're engineering a crisis Donald Trump may not be what we expect him to be I don't know I don't really know I will we'll find out we will find out a um, couple indications now recently that, you know, because I'm very suspicious mind. Um, you know, he talks about America make, being great again, but I used to wonder where the hell was he um, not criticizing the Clintons when I knew all the information on the Clintons back before 1992. You know, I never heard a peep out of this guy. Recently, a couple indications were something's a little fishy is... He was thinking about having John Cash as his running mate, which is a died in the wool New World Order globalist. And number two, um, the other thing was he appointed as his finance um, manager, campaign manager, somebody who used to work for Goldman Sachs and used to, um, was a major partner, I think, at Goldman Sachs and used to work for George Soros. I found that interesting too. Um, we shall find out. But you know, I always look at it like this. Like I said, there's two types of people in this world. There's the people that are controllers and the people that are want to be controlled. That's one group. Controllers and the people that want to be controlled. 
and there's the people that are free spirits, free thinkers, and they want to do and take do on their own, take responsibility, take risk, and go their own way. That's and see those type of people don't need politicians. Because a politician is a promise maker. A politician is somebody that just it says is going to control you in exchange for providing you some kind of security. The hell with that. We don't need that. Um, you know, I'm kind of showing a warrior class Indian here. Um, American and Native Indian, if you want to use that proper word, I guess. Um, this was something actually born out of necessity. Something that was not there even prior to the white man involved um, arriving on American soil or United States soil today. The American Native Indian was actually agrarian and developed into a warrior class because of you know the influx of white civilization that was knocking them off their land. Now of course they were not successful but largely they were not successful due to uh, smallpox and chlorella and other white man's diseases and I do predict that one of the biggest problems we're going to have in the future besides food is going to be medicine um, even today the third biggest cause of deaths in the United States is due to um, uh, medical mistakes whether it's pharmaceutical bad operations screw ups you know telling people to do the wrong thing and the first two is um, the first two causes of death are heart disease and cancer um, actually all those things cancer and heart disease can be cured with ancient American Indian medicine Amer Native American Indian medicine I know they can be because uh, my cousin who is up in northern Maine was going to would be dead today if she listened, kept listening to the doctor who was chopping out parts and she started working with the Indians up in Maine and she's alive today. One of the re and you know, you're looking at the numbers, the doctor's making so much and it's all configured into the GDP and the economy's rosy because this guy's making so much money, he's putting out all these pharmaceuticals and he's charging, he's billing. Uh, which is a lot of fraudulent billing out there too uh, to health insurance companies and I'm very much aware of that because my mother was an investigator for that for on them uh, for many years um, and they'll be telling you oh the economy's great because look at the numbers in reality it's not helping anybody so I, I think the purification means you know when we're talking about economic collapse or we're talking about you know the whole everything coming down and you know we should not be rejoicing so much about the elite failing uh, it's going to be a hard time but it's going to be something whereby there's going to be a rebirth it's not going to be something where people get rich like Mike Maloney's promising people it's going to be something whereby we return to a simpler time a time of spirituality and I don't want to eat you know idealize the Native American Indians too much because I know there was a lot of stuff going on between the tribes and you know they're fierce fighting taking captives you know they're doing stuff to each other too I mean they're not like a perfect people I'm not even gonna knock the whites or all the way or anything like that but I'm saying is our structures that we have today where we have people that are controllers and people that want to be controlled that's going out the window we're going back to a time of a simpler time when people are going to be responsible work and provide for themselves take what they need and help other people and provide for the community and provide for each other and take care of the earth not in a way where we're going to have a global carbon tax, I'm not talking about that, but more along the ways of the uh, ideological way of the American Native Indian. So I think we're really coming up to a time of purification. It's not going to be an easy time, but it's not going to be an impossible time either. 
it's not going to be a time when you get filthy rich, um, but it's going to be a time when you probably find, find better peace and better, um, you know, re reality in our our existence rather than the fake electronic garbage that we're being subjected to all the time through the major media where they're constantly deflecting your attention uh, through you know BS garbage news um, and issues that don't mean anything and also to get your focused in on entertainment and play all the time it's gonna be a matter of work but you know work is fun too work is fun too there is satisfaction in comp accomplishing things. So, I mean, I didn't really give you an exact by the numbers silver update, but I also want to give you the moralistic reasons why you're really behind silver. Um, people are looking to make a fast. You, you probably are going to make a, quite a bit of money on it, though. I really do think so. But people that are concentrating on only making money more than likely they're going to blow that money just like most people who win a lottery uh, they seem to mismanage their money and lose it within three years and they're back to you know the worst position they were when they started in other words you have to think about your real life's goals and not just look at money only but I think you really will make a lot of money but the thing is to take that money and and put it to good use uh, for things that are hard capital assets, things that can help produce uh, things for other people, and things that can benefit all of us. You know, it could be something whereby, you know, you get back into construction for dwellings or um, types of transportation systems that are a little more efficient, or maybe we can even go back. Um, to some of the earlier technology that we used to have at the turn of the century that was uh, far more simple. You know, sometimes we look at some of these uh, automobiles that we had back in uh, the, the 20s and the 30s. Um, they seem to operate fine. I think the only major improvement they really needed was, you know, the braking system and maybe the tires. But um, they go a little slower. Uh, but so what, right? You know, what's the big rush? Why are people such a rush to go here and there? You look at what people are doing today, it's like most people are chasing nothing. Nothing. They've been brainwashed by Madison Avenue, and like I said, we're probably just going back to a simpler time again. But I think there will be a major purification and destruction of our present day world before that happens. And it's not something to, to dwell upon like. Oh my God! You know what? You know what I mean. It's almost like CNN. It was always out there when there's a war conflict and everybody's glued to the boob tube. What's what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? It's not about that. It's about a change. You know, what's going to happen is out of the ashes, something else is going to come about. Now I know the elite are trying this on purpose because out of the ashes they got plans. But I think their plans are will be thwarted because um, they're basically thumbing their nose at God itself or the Creator or the Great Spirit or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're thumbing their nose at that. They think that the little tiny speck that we even live in this universe, they think they're bigger than everything else that's out there. That's how the elite think. I will not give up my being to be controlled by them. But most people are. Like I said, most people fall into, well, even though the one group is a subset of the other, but one group is the controllers, the smaller of the subset, and the other group is the ones that want to be controlled and protected. That's one side of every, that's most people. The people that take personal responsibility, take risks, and they want to do th take uh, responsibility for their own actions and work for their own uh, existence, those are people that fall into the minority. But we're, we're going to be going back to that situation again. If you look back at the turn of the century, um, 
or even prior to that, say we look at even about the earliest industrial revolution and even before the American Industrial Re Revolution, what America was really built upon was not even so much, you know, fact, big factories sponsored by Carnegie and steel mills and all that. It was actually built upon uh, cottage industry like blacksmiths, weavers, farmers, uh, people that were carpenters, stonemasons, cottage industry, sole proprietors doing their own labor. Not much of that going on today as, you know, people trying to make a fast buck off of, uh, I don't know, showing the latest fashion trends or some garbage. So I think, like I said, there's going to be a time of purification. And you being into silver, you're in the right area. It's not the only answer, but it is one of the essential answers because financially it is one is one aspect of it. But I think silver is actually going to have a great, great, great demand for it in the future because of its medicinal properties. It does not cure the way some of these people say in the body. The way you know it, it does help, though. It does help against some disease in the body. But it's not this magic cure for every damn thing there is. But the fact that silver has such powerful antimicrobial properties, that alone makes it essential that every household in the world should have at least a few ounces of silver. And there's definitely not enough to go around. Definitely not. Um, that is one area whereby the product can actually go up exponentially in value. So I think what's coming up is there's going to be a major purification in this country but it's not something that's doom and gloom it's something that it's a change and uh, I just think we're going to be going back to an earlier time of the American the Native American Indian maybe so much so not so much as the American Plains Indian warrior class but maybe the agricultural class and partly the warrior class too I think most Americans are going to wind up being farmers. Could you imagine these two women uh, with their mini skirts and their makeup and all that bullshit out there um, behind a mule with a plowshare? No. In their high heels? No. be quite a change, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Um, it would be a humbling experience, but it's a matter of that's where we're going. And people that do not accept that, well... <laughs> and they're looking for somebody to protect them they're going to be out in the cold because the controllers basically are users and the ones that like to be controlled are going to find out they're going to be up the creek without a paddle so I do not want to be in that group at all and that's one reason I do not put 100% faith in Donald Trump I look at Donald Trump as well considering everybody else is out there he's the best shot we got <laughs> but as far as like I'm not saying he's going to fix everything for me I don't need anybody to fix anything for me actually the only thing I need for as far as politics and a, a politician in Washington D.C. is to basically get rid of freaking half the laws they, they, they created and get rid of half the departments they created because we don't need them we can do things on our own that's the way I see it so there's independent-minded people that take responsibility, and those are the type of people that own physical silver. And that's really why you should have it. It is a moral thing. It is a moral thing. Silver is provided by nature, and um, it does have very, very strong med It's very strong medicine. It's a very strong medicine. I mean, it's not the only medicine out there. It doesn't do everything. Some of the exaggerators out there seem to think it's a cure-all for every damn thing there is. It's not. Uh, it is. It does work against every microbe there is in a petri dish, but not against that in a body. But um, it's something that is going to be essential for a simpler time that we're going to after the purification occurs.